So in this video, we're going to be reflecting in the line y equals mx. So what do I mean by that? Let's take a quick look at uh, our little app. So here we have a little object here, and we have the line y equals mx, which means it passes through the origin, and then we have its image here. Now I can change the gradient of uh, y equals mx, and you can see that it's being reflected in that line. So we need a nice, neat way to reflect it in that line. Just before I leave here, you might want to notice that as I change the gradient of our line, our image is rotating around the image. Uh, so this has something to do with rotation in some way. So what we're going to do is build this up from scratch and consider our all important point one zero. So here I have a line, let's call it y equals mx, and I'm going to reflect that point in that line. It's going to look like this. There is my reflected point. Now, before we get into that, it's going to be important to understand that y equals mx can be written in a different way. Um, now, the m, we focus in on this m here. m is rise over run. Now, by rise over run, we mean this line here and this line here. But uh, it can also be thought of in a different way. This is an angle here, and this is opposite, and this is adjacent. So we can think of the gradient as tan theta, because tan theta equals um, opposite over adjacent, equals rise over run. M equals rise over run, tan theta equals rise over run. So it's going to be very important for us to understand that y equals mx is actually y equals tan theta. I'll put the x on the back, but we can put the x here too y equals x tan theta. Tan theta is m, m is tan theta. Which now means that we can think about our y equals mx in terms of this little angle here. And as I change my y equals mx, as I change my um, angle there, you can see that line moves and our reflection moves as well. Now I talked about the reflection as a rotation. You can see as the line changes, so to the circle, it rotates. It's rotating around a circle and a specific type of circle that you've already met, the unit circle. So this, um, as we reflect in this y equals mx, as the value of theta increases, we are rotating around that circle. All right, let's draw some pictures on this thing. Now, you should already recall that the coordinates of that dot are cos theta, sine theta. And I'll just draw in a little triangle so we can see that. All right, so look at this triangle here. And we said the coordinates of a dot on the unit circle are cos theta, sine theta. Now, cos theta, because this length here is the adjacent side of this triangle, and sine theta, because this length here is the opposite side. Now, I'm only telling half the story here, exactly half, uh, because, look, this is our angle theta, and it's not the full angle of the triangle. It's only half of the angle of the triangle. So if we're going to talk about this coordinate in terms of theta, which this angle is, then this coordinate isn't theta. It's 2 theta. It's twice as much as whatever that is. And you can see as I change that angle, that remains true. 38 here, we're up to like 76 there. So all of that is to say that our point one zero will transform or be transformed to cos two theta, sine two theta. And we're gonna use that as in our reflection matrix. The other point that we care about a lot is this point here, one zero. What happens when we reflect that in this, in this line? All right, it's all the way down there, you can see. Uh, now let's try drawing in the same kind of triangle that we've got for this one. Now we can go through a proof that these two triangles are congruent, but it's gonna be enough for me at the moment that we eyeball them and say, well, right, they look the same. You can see the coordinates of, of that dot are matching up with the coordinates of that dot, except reversed. Now, that's got some interesting implications because um, the angle 2 theta is not sitting here. It's sitting here. Now, if the angle 2 theta is sitting there, that means that the coordinates of this dot are not cos 2 theta, sine 2 theta. They're going to be the, the opposite of that. Now, that's 
almost correct, but let's just jump through it in turn. Sine 2 theta is the x coordinate, which is in this case is positive, so that makes sense. But cos, that should be 2 theta. Cos 2 theta is negative. So we're going to need a negative in there. And now we have this fantastic thing where we can reflect and doesn't matter what y equals mx is, we get this cool thing going on. Okay, so that is reflecting in y equals mx. Now, practically for us, what does that mean? It means we use this um, transformation matrix to transform our points. Uh, so you should remember, this is the little drawing we just made. Now, this says that the x coordinate 0, 1 is being transformed to cos 2 theta sine 2 theta. You can see that here. So the x coordinate 1, 0. And 0, 1, this b coordinate here, is being transformed to sine 2 theta negative cos 2 theta. So there's our um, transformation function. Now, what kind of question might we be asked with something like this? Find the matrix that will reflect the point x, y in the line through the origin at an angle of 30 degrees to the positive x axis. All right, so that's asking us to reflect the point in this line here. Um, so what transformation matrix do we need? We need this transformation matrix with 30 degrees as our, as our angle. So it's cos 2 times 30 is 60, sine 60, sine 60, negative cos 60 and of course you should be able to figure out numbers here without a calculator all right so a question like that it's pretty straightforward and that's about as far as we're going to go with that one we'll have time to go into some composition stuff a little bit later on that's reflecting in the line y equals mx